the fort at Chittor is reckoned among the most famous forts in India. Not only because it is one of the oldest forts in Rajasthan, but also because for generations it was considered impregnable, invincible. Be it allowed in Khilji or the Grand Mughal Akbar, whoever invaded it had to contend with very brave defenders. The fort has thick ramparts, big gates, sharp turns, like any other fort. But the best defense this fort had was the brave warriors who defended it. The citadel of Chitor is situated about 100 kilometers away from the city of Udaipur. Known as the Cradle of Chivalry, it is an integral part of the proud history of Rajasthan spanning 13 centuries. The martyrdom of countless brave hearts has sanctified the compound. The fort spreads over a tract of land that covers 700 acres with a circumference of 13 kilometers. <laughs> Bapa Rawal, the founder of the Mewar dynasty, defeated the local rulers and captured the site. Later his successors made it their capital. Many of these rulers bravely resisted invaders, setting an example for others. A lot more has been written about Chittor and a lot more of the stories of the bravery that took place at Chittor are known. So it is one of the kind of standard bearers for Rajasthan history. Fighting to the last is one of the things they talk about. Bravery not turning one's back, those, those are some things that come to mind. The old fort was built on a hill about 500 feet high and this was enough to protect those who lived within it in those times. It was Maharana Kumbha who strengthened the fortifications in the 15th century to withstand the emerging strategic challenge. There is a local saying for Chittor, Gar to Chittor gar, baki sab garaya, which actually means that if there is a fort that has to be reckoned with, that is Chittor, whereas the others are just small fortresses. Ramparts were raised in two or three rows all around to provide stronger defense. These were built on top of strong rocks. When Qutbuddin Aibak, the Sultan of Delhi, attacked the fort, these ramparts foiled him. It was the wealthiest fort. It commanded the countryside and it also commanded the resources. There was phenomenal wealth in Gujarat and Chitorgar stood between the Sultanate of Delhi and Gujarat. And they all wanted to reach Gujarat, its wealth and its access to the sea. And Chitorgar was the bastion between them. So to conquer Chitorgar was to command north and south. The arrangements made for the defense of this fort illustrate the progress in military architecture with the passage of time. The massive gates in Chitorgar were built according to the canons of Hindu Vastu Shastra. In times gone by, a small city flourished, enclosed by these ramparts.
mere mention of the fort of Chittor conjures up visions of the tragic tale of Princess Padmini. Like Helen of Troy, whose face has launched a thousand battleships, it is believed that it was the peerless beauty of Padmini that provoked Sultan Alauddin Khilji of Delhi to assault the citadel to claim Padmini as the prize. The tales of romance between Princess Padmini and her consort husband Ratnasen are the subject matter of the Hindu epic Padmavat written by Malik Muhammad Jayasi. This tale, it is believed, is to be interpreted metaphorically. It does not deal of lustful worldly love alone. It talks of the restlessness of the individual soul to be one with the Almighty. The depiction of Bara Masa, the changing cycle of seasons in this poem is supposed to be matchless in Hindi literature. The Padmani Palace is perhaps the most famous spot in the fort. It keeps alive the memories of the beautiful queen who once dwelt here and has inspired many moving ballads and folklore. However, the style of the building suggests that it was constructed much later. He laid siege to Chitorgaran when he finally gained access to and he wanted to meet Rani Padmini. He was promised by the Maharana that he could see her reflection in the Padmini Talab. So she came out of the palace down onto the steps and her reflection was seen in the pond. And Alauddin Khilji, of course, fell madly in love with her and through deceit, he was determined to get her through fair means and foul. And then, of course, the famous story of once Chitorgar fell and Johar, Rani Padmini led the Johar of Chitorgar. <laughs> In 1303, Alauddin Khilji attacked Chitor. Its strategic location was tempting. After a long siege, lasting many months, the fort was subdued. The guardians fought bravely to the last breath. Over 50,000 soldiers were killed. Princess Padmini, along with 1,100 companions, immolated themselves on a pyre. After the battle, scenes of devastation could be seen everywhere. This palace reminds us of the selfless sacrifice of warriors like Gora and Badal. After some time, the Rajputs regained control of the fort and peace and prosperity returned to Chitor. Mewar reached the zenith of its glory during the reign of Maharana Kumbha. The palace that bears his name is a prominent building. It has a large hall of audience and residential rooms for the queens are built along the corridors. Mahana Kumbha Hamare Mewar ka ek nakshatra ki tarah hai. वह बहुत सारी कलाओं के विद्वान थे उन्होंने संगीत की सब विधाओं का वर्णन किया खुद लड़ाका थे उनकी एक विचित्र वीणा इंस्ट्रूमेंट इजाद किया वो बहुत प्रसिद्ध हुआ और उन्होंने मालवा और गुजरात जीता Throughout his life Maharana Kumbha battled with the armies of the sultans of Gujarat and Malwa he always emerged victorious. After the conquest of Gujarat, he erected the Tower of Victory. The Qutub Minar in Delhi may be taller, 
but the decorations on Vijay's thumb, the Tower of Victory, are far more elegant. The base has a circumference of 14 and a half meters. The tower is 37 meters high and has nine stories. linkage of the spiritual and the temporal because the Vijay's thumb is built alongside the temple. Vala was as much an obeisance to God as it was the victory of the king. And I think that interplay defined the way um, kingdoms were built and India's heritage was built and respected. The tower is covered with exquisite stone carvings that depict Hindu gods and goddesses. Sculptures of the rivers Ganga, Yamuna and Saraswati along with celestial creatures like Gandharvas and Apsaras also decorate the walls. There are two structures in the Chittor fort that have acquired an iconic status. These are the Tower of Victory and the Tower of Fame. The Tower of Victory was erected to commemorate the victory on the Gujarat front. It reminds us of the uses of military power to protect ourselves. And the Tower of Fame erected next to the temple dedicated to Jayanti Thankars reminds us, tells us how much more mighty is the moral force, the force that allows us to contend with enemies within and without like anger, envy and lust. And such is the fame that makes man really immortal. Kirti's thumb, the Tower of Fame, is shorter than the Vijay's thumb, but still it matches it in ornamentation. The structure is decorated with unclad Jain idols, indicating that it was commissioned by a rich trader belonging to the Digambar sect. The ceiling too bears the Jain imprint. There were great patrons of the arts and therefore there's a music, there is poetry, there's great literature, there are Jain temples, there are Hindu temples, it all came under the patronage of the king. And so in peacetime, there was a great flourishing of culture. The South Beast Devri Temple Complex presents glimpses of the evolution of Jain temple building styles between the 14th and 16th centuries. These shrines not only provided a place for worship, but also served as repositories of culture and seats of scholarship.
Meera, smitten by love for Lord Krishna, wandered from one place to another. This temple preserves memories of the days when she worshipped her Lord here. In fact, though the shrine bears her name, it was built by Maharana Kumbha. The much larger Kumbha Sham temple stands in the same compound. One of the most memorable legends associated with the fort of Chittor is that of Meera. She was a Rajput princess married to a Sion of the Chittor family. From the beginning, she was not attracted by the pomp and pageantry of the royal life. She wanted to share her life and her love for Krishna with the common people, be one with them in their sorrows and joys. Meera very courageously took a step to break those shackles of feudalism that restricted a woman from leading her life according to her own wishes. Her songs continue to be sung as devotional songs all over the land from north to south, east to west and move all the listeners. After her marriage to the Crown Prince of Mewar, Meera used to live in this palace. However, she preferred the small temple to the confines of the large palace. Kumbhasham Temple is an imposing edifice that stands close to the Meera Temple. Idols of Sri Krishna, Balram and Subhadra are installed here. The temple originally dedicated to Vara Avtar was built in the Nagar style sometime between the 8th and the 9th centuries. It was badly damaged when Alauddin Khilji raided Chitor and it was later rebuilt by Rana Kumba. Devi Devtao ka apna ek maitura hai, sharda bhi rehti hai, vishwas bhi padapta hai, सारा जब समय युद्ध में बीतना है तो भाग्य जो नियति ये मानते हैं कि ईश्वर के हाथ में है तो वो सारा इसी ढंग से मंदिरों का महत्व बढ़ता गया जटाशंकर महादेव टेंपल इज अनदर रिमार्केबल टेंपल कमिशंड बाय राणा कुंभा a devotee of Lord Shiva. Ancient law maintains that Bhim, the legendary hero of the Mahabharat, worshipped Shiva at this temple. मेवाड़ के महाराणा इकलिंग जी के दीवान कहलाते थे वो कभी शासक नहीं कहलाते थे इकलिंग जी के दीवान के रूप में थे महाराणा के खिलाफ विद्रोह इकलिंग जी के खिलाफ विद्रोह है तो देवताओं का एक श्रद्धा केंद्र होने से उसके बहुत से लाभ शासकों को प्राप्त हो सकते थे जनता के उत्साह को बढ़ाने भी और जनता के रोष को कम करने में भी This shrine dedicated to Adbhutnath, one of the epithets of Shiva, was built during the reign of Raimal in the 15th century. Mm -hmm. 
The statues carved in stone reflect very refined sensibility and the elaborate decorations testify to the prosperity of Chitor during that period. Chitor used to be the heart of Mewar. This is on the route to Gujarat. So all the caravan and trade caravans moving down from Delhi and from Ajmer and from uh, North India towards Gujarat would pass close by through Mewar. Because of this reason of the fact that the fort could command a very large area, uh, both militarily and commercially, that the fort became irresistible to Akbar. Most of the princes and chieftains had surrendered before the Mughals. Only Chitor refused to submit and stood between them and the Arabian Sea. It was a big challenge to bring down such citadels of resistance. Akbar first extended his hands of friendship and those who accepted particularly the house of Kachwahas of Ame were of course given positions and ranks and their fortunes rose. But those who were belligerent like the Rana uh, of Mewar became the butt of their attack. Emperor Akbar invaded Chitor in 1567. The citadel could be captured only after a three-month-long siege. The infuriated victor ordered the large-scale slaughter of all those who had resisted his forces. Thousands lost their lives. Women in the palace chose death over dishonor. Chittor at that time was defended by a 16-year-old general who died fighting in the siege. Akbar ordered the massacre of the citizens and this is supposed to be one of the cases where Akbar was particularly brutal in a not so brutal career. Akbar was so taken by the bravery of the defenders that he eventually had statues made of the two defenders and those statues were then put at Agra Fort. This palace commemorates Jaimal and Patta, two brave soldiers in their teens who laid down their lives defending this fort. They continue to be worshipped like gods and have become unfading symbols of indomitable courage and selfless sacrifice. All those who love freedom rank Chitorgar above all other pilgrimages. I long not to visit Ganga Sagar, Rameshwar or Kashi. It's only for Chitor that my eyes are always thirsty. <laughs> <laughs>